All right, good evening, everybody. We are going to have the ability to delete firmwares from Deploy the Fleet. Well, we're, we're gonna start. Anyway, I don't know how far we'll, we'll get through here, but um, so right now, let's, uh, let's show an example here. Bring this over here. After deploy the fleet.io. Okay, so I was going back through. I think Twitch32 is a good one. Yeah, or Twitch. Um, to get to launch, the ability to delete a firmware wasn't a huge deal, so it wasn't part of the initial feature set uh, for the MVP. But now you can see I was doing some testing, um, save twice testing, more testing, testing again, another test, and there's no way to delete these. So they are there. I mean, I can delete them by hand. I can log into the back end and, and delete them there, but it would be nice to be able to delete them from here in, uh, in the application. Now, the most common use case for this, I would imagine, is if you create it, I also don't have a, a way to edit. And so this is also kind of a shortcut to edit, sort of like the way Twitter... Um, has worked for years, which is you can't edit the tweets. Um, and, or did they recently add that? Anyway, since like forever, Twitter, you couldn't edit tweets. And so the way around that was you just delete the tweet and you retweet, you know, you, you tweet it again with the corrections. And so similar, I'm going to cheat here, at least for now, until I add the ability to edit firmwares. And, and really all you would edit is maybe if you fat fingered the version or the release notes, like the created and the size are just what they are. You wouldn't change those. And so for now, I would just say, uh, if you need to edit it, because you'll most like, you're not going to have a one that you've had for months and be like, oh, I need to go back and edit that now most likely. And so just say, if you made a mistake when you created it, just delete it and create it again. Um, and so we're going to add the ability to delete it. And I think just the simplest way that we'll do this is when you click on one of them here and it opens up. Uh, default's not a great example. Um, let's click on one of the inactive ones. You see, you've got this option down here to set as default. I think I'll just add another one little uh, trash can icon here that would be the delete and then we'll pop up a dialog that says are you sure you want to delete it and if they say yes then we will delete it and so there is no infrastructure for this at all um, so the front end doesn't have this ability obviously as you just saw and the back end api does not have the ability to delete firmware either and so we're going to work on both of those things first uh, should we do the back end or the front end first uh, i don't know that's a good question. Um, and let me launch the stream manager here. Oh, we're going to get feedback. Uh, creator dashboard. Here we go, stream manager. OK. Um, good. Okay. So which one do we want to start with? So right now we're going to come into, I think we'll start with the front end. And so what we can do on the front end here, uh, what's my change? Oh, the config. Yeah. Cause it should point locally. Um, and let me just make sure it does. I need to pull this off screen for a second to do that. Uh, the configuration file. It is pointing to localhost. Yep. Okay. Just what we want. Okay. So we've got the front end there. And then we've got the back end here. So what we can do is we can say uh, npm run dev on the back end. And it will spin that up listening on port 3000. And then on the front end, we just say Quasar Dev. And the problem I found with working through this stuff, like switching, like I've been doing nothing but, well, launch stuff lately. So writing content and blog posts and things like that. But if you spend too much time working on the back end, you kind of get out of the flow of the front end. It's all, well, the front end's TypeScript, so it's JavaScript. Um, and the back end is TypeScript as well. And so at least you're not switching technology stacks that way. 
But Quasar has sort of some Quasarisms that you get used to and you can really cruise through. And since I haven't done anything on the front end for a while, I'm probably going to stumble through this a little bit. But that happens when you, like I said, when you spend a lot of time away from it, you come back into it. So uh, if we come back to our window here and say localhost 3000, uh yeah right okay so here we are we'll go to firmware and the first thing we'll do is just make it so that when you open up this dialog here uh we can put a delete now we could also potentially put a delete icon here and then if we want to delete one up here, the same. For now, let's just start with the, the pop-up because the same pop-up happens whether you click it from the inactive section or the active section. So this is an easy place to add it. So um, let's open up the firmware's view. And let's do a search for set as default. Q chip. Let's just copy this and I think I'll want it to the left of the aligned right. So we'll say click uh, confirm. What is con what are we switching confirm off of? Uh, this one right here. This V modal. And so we'll want this as well. So confirm is not really a great name for that. So let's rename it like, uh, let's rename this confirm set default and change it here. And we'll also need to change it here. Okay. And we'll say confirm delete. It's kind of an interesting way to do that. So I, I confession, I contracted out parts of this. Um, I wrote a lot of this code myself, but I also, like I said, contracted out some of it. So this is an interesting probably wouldn't have done it this way. And I, I code reviewed all this. So my fault for <laughs> checking it in that way, but probably would have put this in like a function, but this is fine. This works. Uh, confirm delete true. If modal firmware dot ID, we should only show this. Oh yeah. We should show this always. So we don't need a V if, so we can get rid of that. Clickable text color, white rounded color is going to be red. Um, and actually let's, let's, I think we can do, um, negative, like color equals negative. Uh, I don't know if that'll work, but let's try it. Negative. So it's, if it's the theme, um, size is small. And then I don't think I want a label. Well, maybe I do. We'll say delete, and then I think we can do icon. Icon equals, and the icons for this are just uh, material icons. So I'm just gonna do a search here on another browser, like delete. Um, I don't like any of those. How about like trash? Oh, delete, so. We'll use delete or delete outline. We'll, we'll take a look at both of them. Delete outline is what we'll start with. And we'll save that. And so right away, these should have, or not. I'm on local host here, right? Did something fail? Chip. Uh, click, firm, delete. That should all 
be there. What am I missing? Table. There's no V if, like it should just always show. Maybe we need to refresh here. No, not showing up. Hmm. Why would that be? Interesting. Okay. Um, let's look at the code. Key card actions. This run right here. Oh, I know why. Because I bet, I bet if we open up the tools here, there's going to be an error in the console. If we maybe change. No, no error in the console. That's hard to believe. Interesting. Okay, well, but we, we still need to plumb some more of this in. So at click, confirm delete equals true. Like, let's add in the variables for this, so. Um, over here, we'll say. Firmware delete generation dialog. Confirm delete equals false. And we will say um, we need to copy this Q dialog because we're going to do something very similar to it. Deleting firmware. And we'll say confirm delete. Now, just for kicks, let's uh that Set as default should still work. Yeah, OTA, so that still works. Still not sure why it's not showing up. Um, confirm delete. Oh, that's a knock at my door. That's a kid going to bed. Uh, stand by. I'll be right back. Okay. All right, we're back. Um, let's say confirm. Actually, we'll just say delete firmware question mark. Um, we can get rid of this entire line. We can just say this operation cannot be undone. Are you sure you want to delete? Um, how could we, uh, yeah, I'll just say this firmware. And then we'll have cancel and yes delete it. OK. 
Okay, we'll save all of that. And again, why is this not showing? Set as default. I mean, just, just for fun, this is where I like the sanity check. Let's change set as default to, is this working? Like, no. So obviously I'm not hitting what I think I'm hitting. Oh, yes, I know exactly why. <laughs> Stupid. Okay. Sorry. See, when you haven't done it for a while. Um, watch this. I am hitting... So the way I do this is the front-end project is separate from the back-end project. Like, they're separate repositories. And what I do is when I want to deploy a new version of the front-end, I build it from the front-end project, and then I copy it in as static files into the back-end project. So right now, the API and the back-end, I've covered this in a previous stream, the, the API for Deploy the Fleet as well as the app itself are delivered from the same server. And so right now, I am hitting the local built version of the uh, front end. But if I go to localhost 8080, now I will be hitting the Quasar active dev version that we are working on right now that uh, will have all of our changes. So now if I come to Twitch and I go to firmware and I click on one of these, there we go. We have a delete button and that Oh my goodness, excuse me. Is this working? I didn't save it. I'll well, save that. Uh, so negative is working as the color. So let's... Uh, set as default, delete. And if I hit delete, delete firmware, this operation cannot be undone. Cannot is one word, isn't it? Cannot or can not. Grammarly will tell us. I don't want to sign up or do anything. Yeah. Um, I don't want to use the contraction version. Cannot is better for formal writing. Okay. Uh, yes, delete it. Cancel. And then I need to change the action of the cancel because that's going to want to delete uh, down here. Like click make default. We want to say click is delete firmware. And what we'll do is we'll come down here into the class. And we will create an async function called delete firmware. And this dot modal firmware dot id. Where do I set that? Modal Yeah, okay. The one that we have open. Yeah, okay. So we can actually say um, this operation cannot be done. Are you sure you want to delete version modal firmware dot version? Um, let's change it to be, are you sure you want to delete? Yeesh. Burn. Firmware version that, and then instead of, I'm changing the wrong one. No, 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 we're good. This one I, 
Uh, this should still be make default, and this should be delete firmware. Okay, um, so that should do that, and then we'll say async delete firmware. And from right here, we'll just say like, uh, let's just do this for testing purposes. Firmware deleted. Firmware version that deleted. Okay, yeah, and I know that it's not technically async. Has no expression. That shouldn't shouldn't be a problem though. Like we should be able to save it and still run it. Okay, so now if I click on here, I've got the delete. Just really quick, before we move further, we're gonna change. Um, we're gonna change it in, to red, and we're also gonna change it to delete. Oh, I think I like that a little better. It's a little softer. Okay, status default is gonna do that. Cancel, delete. This operation cannot be undone. Are you sure you want to delete version, firmware version? I didn't see if that was the version I clicked on. <laughs> 1 1.0.4, yeah, okay. Version 1.0.4, yes, delete it, cancel. I'm gonna hit cancel and I'm gonna hit delete and I'm gonna say yes, delete it. Firmware version 1.0.4 deleted. Sweet. Okay. So cool. That is, takes care of the UI. And I can still do that for something up here. Oh, but see, now I need to think. Yeah. Okay. We need to... Are we allowed to delete active versions of the firmware? Great question. So the default for sure, no. So like anything that's marked default, let's see if we got a different one that has multiple actives. Um, no, really? None of them have multiple active? That's hard to believe. Okay, well, you can have multiple active firmwares, um, but I'm gonna say just if it's the default, we shouldn't display it. Yeah, let's change that. We should not display it if it's the default, because we can't, you don't wanna, that's gonna create some workflow issues, so. I'm gonna use the same VIF. If the firmware ID is not the same as the, yeah, there you go. Okay. And now we should get no options there. Can't delete the default, but you can delete other ones. Delete. And beyond done, make sure when to delete from version 1.0 to 8. Yeah, okay. Um, Cool, and not available there. And if I delete it, cancel works, and yes, delete it, calls the function. Okay. So now what we'll wanna do is down in delete firmware, is we'll want to essentially do something like this. This dot open modal equals false. Why do we do that? Oh. Oh, I see. Yeah, well, so we'll want to do the same thing. Cool. 
Alright. So, yeah. We want to basically do all of this. Same thing. Just change the messages and such. Okay. Uh, dispatch, update default. Uh, products, I think we want to do firmware. We want to do dispatch. Firmware. I can't remember if it's firmware or firmwares. Firmware. Firmware. Uh, delete firmware. We'll want to pass the ID. And then if it is, we'll say, what did I get rid of my, yep, I did. Firmware version that deleted. I'll say, um, enable to delete firmware. Please try again. Okay, now what we need to do is we need to add an action called delete firmware over here in our store. Mm. It is an action, yes. Create a product, update default firmware. So it's gonna be similar to this. But it'll be a firmware action. Load firmware. And then right down here, we'll just say async delete firmware. Now to do that, so there's a couple things that we're gonna have to do. Um, Change this to firmware ID. This is to commit a mutation. I don't know that we'll need to reclassify firmware. No, we will not. Wait, dispatch update product now. That is again an action. Yeah, update product. Okay. And so we'll commit a mutation to delete the firmware, but we also, and we're not going to need to do that. Product. We're gonna to want to do something similar. I, I hate this. So this is a I have a ticket to fix this, but we haven't yet. So this is Really close to what we're looking at here, right? We want to catch an error, and if the error response da, 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 is 4 1, throw new error not authorized, return false. Yeah, so we're doing all of that. So it's really just this that we're going to need. Okay. So let's get rid of all of this. And up in here, we're going to await something, not this. And then we're going to say commit 
firmware deleted. Pass it to the firmware ID. Firmware ID. And the way that AxeIOS works essentially is if it gets a 200, which means it succeeds, it's um, it it's uh it's it's positive. Like if if anything that's not a two hundred happens, um, Axios um, throws. So you don't have to look at the response. Like as long as the response is two hundred, which it will be if the delete is successful, then we know it worked. And so we can say delete firmware is true. And back over in here, we're looking at that, right? Wait, this dot stored at dispatch. Firmware, delete firmware. And over in here, this is delete firmware. Before we call the back end, we'll just do a console.log deleting firmware firmware ID. And there's no wait. Yeah, it doesn't. That's okay for now. Uh, throw, and then the same thing back here is. Oh, if it throws. Well, yeah, if it throws, we're going to catch it. Authorize throw is yeah 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 and this is if you're logged out this is why like I said I have a an item on the backlog to wrap all of these things where I'm doing this this is so so janky like if Axios throws and the response code is 401 that means that they've been logged out and so there's a problem there and so we're gonna throw not authorized and I will catch not authorized and redirect them to the login page. And so I want to create a wrapper that does all the all the requests go through this wrapper that does things like if it's 401, then redirect to the login page. That way I don't have to handle it all throughout the code. It's a terrible um, pattern that I have right now. So uh, anyway, so if it returns anything other than 200, it's going to return false. Otherwise, it's going to return a throw an error, not authorized. And for now, let's just catch it. Um, new error not authorized. Uh, let's go to like mm, dashboard, maybe. Here we go. Firmwares. So we're going to say try. All of this stuff. Um, and if it fails with a 401, go to the login page. I hate it. I know it's ugly. Uh, just bear with me. And uh, firmware delete. So this should all work. And we should, it's not going to call a backend. Delete firmware has no await expression. Correct. Not yet. That's okay. Dispatch is defined but never used. That is also correct. And we can fix that because we will not need a dispatch. So that should be better. We should just get the one error now. And it will commit firmware deleted. So now we're going to come into mutations. And we're going to say... Firmware deleted. State. Firmware state. And we're going to say firmware ID. Um, string. Okay. And newly created firmware. So we need to 
Date that all for, I guess we would need to reclassify. Or we could just delete it from all of them. Hmm. Let's think about that. And this is how bad my JavaScript is. Like, delete item from JavaScript array. Nine ways to remove elements from a JavaScript array. Um, Cause it's not, find the index of the array element you want to remove using index of. And then remove that index with splice. Array.splice, the index of it, and one. And this is wildly accepted. <laughs> so this is exactly what I'm looking for. Um. I don't like this. Hmm. Oh, people didn't like that answer. Uh, so basically find the, find the index and splice it, splice, remove it. So I would want to classify firmware again, like I did up here. Um, where it was set. I can't just delete it from all of them. That's another option I could do. Because I have I have several arrays. Like I have the all firmware, and then I have active firmware and inactive firmware. And so, There's kind of, I'm trying to think of just like the slick way of doing this. Can I send like a lambda to index of? Script array index of. Doesn't look like it. Fine returns the value. If you need the index, oh, use find index. Oh, no, there, now we're talking about find index. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So, I think what we can do is we can do uh, say let firmware index equal state dot all firmware dot find index and the lambda will be firmware where firmware
firmware.id equals firmware ID. And find index will return what if it's not otherwise negative one. Okay. If firmware, whoa, firmware index used to doing Python at work does not equal negative one, then why is this complaining? Oh, yeah, it will be reassigned in just a moment. Then we're going to say state dot all firmware dot splice firmware index one. And then uh, there's probably a better way to do this, but this is how we're going to do it for now. dot active firmware and state dot inactive firmware firmware so basically check for it in all three arrays and if you find it, then remove it. Yeah. And we're going to call firmware deleted. And that is commit firmware deleted, firmware ID. OK. I don't know. Let's try it. See what happens. I've got the console open. It won't actually delete because, again, we have no back end to do the deletion. Um, and we'll say 1.0.8. We'll say delete. Cancel. That works still. Delete. Yes, delete it. Ooh. That worked. And it's gone. You see it disappeared from the table. I can't delete this firmware. But it's not really deleted, it'll come back. So if I switch from Twitch32 to Twitch and then back to Twitch32, you'll see 1.0.8 is still intact. The rumors of its demise were greatly exaggerated. But uh, this seems to be working. Delete. Yes, 107 is gone. Delete. Yes, 106 is gone. I'm just checking to make sure that the paging works correctly here. 105 is gone, and we should, right now, right for page 5, we got 105 of 7, so let's just keep deleting. Delete. Now we're back. The paging disappeared because I'm only showing 5. Cool. We're just deleting all day. So great. So that is, uh, that looks good. That works. Everything works except to the point of Again, uh, we need to actually call the backend. And so now let us add that. We'll say axios dot, I believe I can just say dot delete API product, the no, not product, API firmware. Uh, firmware ID. I don't. Why? What is this? Oh, that's the. Yeah, yeah. I'm. Yeah, we don't need to send anything. Like, I think we just do it like that. Invalid. Well, firmware ID will be a string. So don't worry about that. Uh, 
we can get rid of that. And now, if we try to delete this, it should say, yeah. Cool. Unable to delete firmware, please try again. And that makes sense because there's no backend to support deleting a firmware. So I believe our front end work is done. Let's just look over. I like to do this, just come into the difference and just look at what I changed. So I added this and that all looks good. Confirm, delete, and then delete size small, delete, delete. And then we can say this one we didn't change. It's just the way it's picking up the difference. So confirm set default because I changed the name of that. Confirm set default. And then this one I said confirm delete. And delete firmware. Nothing is crazy. This operation cannot be undone. Are you sure you want to delete firmware version? The firmware version. Click is delete firmware. Click is still make default. Confirm delete. Confirm set default. And then I added a delete firmware function. Okay. Very good. So that looks right. And then I have actions, which I added a delete firmware. And I am just going to axios delete. And if that succeeds, I will commit firmware deleted, firmware ID, return true, return false, throw not authorized. Again, I hate this pattern, but it's what it is until I refactor it. And mutations, firmware deleted. I go through all firmware. And I splice it. I go through active firmware, and then I splice it, and then I go through inactive firmware. And then I splice it. Okay, those all look good. I'm not going to commit any of that yet. Uh, but we will. All right, moving along. We're doing good. How long have we been streaming here? 47 minutes, almost 48. All right, let's go to deploy the fleet. And we will come to... Not OTA for now. We're going to come to... Firmware routes. And we're going to say it's going to be a lot like get. So let's work on that. We'll say route dot delete ID. Uh, the firmware service is what will take care of this. Um, and things could go wrong. Um, I don't want to return JSON. Do I want to return JSON of the firmware that was deleted? I feel like that's kind of a pattern, like return the firmware that you just deleted, but I don't know that that's really necessary. We're just going to for now say return res.status200.end. And right here, we're going to say console. Whoa. Log. Deleting firmware with ID rec dot params dot ID. Save that. What we'll do is we are going to cancel that and rerun it. And we're going to come back over to here. I use 
uh, local sessions when I'm debugging, so it's not using the actual production session mechanism. And for Twitch 32, firmware. Okay, so that's 0.7. All right, and now what I should have seen is over here, deleting firmware with ID flat. Okay, so that means the plumbing is working to the back end. Now we need to just do add something to the firmware service that we'll delete. Come to the firmware service. We'll say async. Delete firmware. Firmware ID string. Promise bool. Bool to return a boolean. And uh, we'll just say await oh, firmware dot where's my delete? I can never is a DB object, and I believe DB objects implement a delete. Yeah, right there. Oh, mm hmm. Okay. Yep. So we will the delete is an operation on the object itself is how I have designed that. So what we'll do, and what was the return on it? Delete is a Boolean, yeah, so. Boolean. So we will say const firmware equals await firmware.getById firmware ID. And then we'll say if firmware else return false because there was no firmware. Um, if firmware firmware dot delete. And I don't think Okay, so there's two parts to firmwares. There is a database entry where I store some information about the firmware. Things like its version and its created date and its size and the release notes and some other things coming in the future. Um, hash and um, some other things like that. But then there's also the actual binary that backs a firmware, um, which is stored uh, as a storage blob somewhere. Um, currently that's S3 in AWS, but it doesn't have to be. It could be, what do they call it? Are they called Azure storage blobs? Anyway, it could be anywhere. Um, you could, the way it's designed, you can use any storage medium you want. Um, and so when you delete a firmware, you need to delete the database entry. And I've, I've thought about having there be like a flag, like deleted equals true or deleted equals one. And then when we get them, 
So it's like a soft delete. Like you get rid of it, but it's still there. And the only reason I would do that is if I wanted to potentially um, offer like an undo functionality or if I wanted to keep it around and if somebody called me up or sent a support thing in and said, oh my goodness, I deleted a firmware and I didn't mean to, can I get it back? I could just go in and flip the flag to say deleted is false and then it would it would be, it would be back. But I don't wanna mess with that right now. Like if you delete it right now and I say it right in there, you know, when you click on it, delete, this cannot be undone. I'm just going to get rid of it. Boom, it's going to nuke it. But I don't know if I want to mess with deleting the S3 object immediately. We could, but what we could also do is run just like a daily script that just goes through all the firmware and says, hey, are there any are there any S3 objects that exist that don't correspond to a firmware? Do I want to do that? That's not scalable. That's not going to scale. I mean, you think about if you get to a point where you've got hundreds or thousands of firmwares every day, you're going to loop over every single one of them to make sure that they have a firmware entry. Nope, I don't like it. We're just going to delete it right out the gate. So. I do want to do both of them, okay? I don't think I have written the S3 code to be able to do that. I've got an S3 asset provider, which is an asset provider. Um, which, uh, where do I define that? S3 asset provider. Oh, is a firmware asset provider. So it's gonna, it's in the firmware. Um, firmware asset provider. Get, save, and create write stream. And so I would need to additionally add a delete here. Abstract, delete, firmware ID string, uh, return, a boolean I guess like if it succeeds and then I've got in memory firmware asset provider so delete would be super easy to implement here because, well, I'll leave it as throw not implemented for now, uh, but I'd need one of these for the S3 as well. Um, S3 asset provider. Say async delete. Promise Boolean. Mm. I don't know that it needs to be async. We'll, we'll come back to that. That's not that's not important yet. So now we've got the provider has a delete on it. So what we would do is in the firmware service, we would um, we'd say const oh deleted db entry equals that. Well, let's not even get into that. That's getting funky. Let's just say if firmware.delete else to do notify admin that 
What if I admin from where DB entry was removed, but binary was not? No, that's not true. <laughs> to do if if that doesn't succeed, then we'll just return false. Return false. And yes, there is a lot of room for logging here, like lots that we could do. And then what we'll do is if the firmware was deleted, then we will say, um, how do I get the, Asset provider right here. There we go. I'm going to say this dot asset provider dot delete from ID. And I will say if that succeeds, return true. Else Uh, I'm going to say else to do, here we go, notify admin that firmware DB entry was removed, but not the binary asset. And I'm still going to return true because it will be gone from their view. Um, and for now, let's just say console.error unable to We'll say, uh, sorry, I was just looking to see. I panicked and thought I might be logging GUIDs, but I'm not. I'm not logging GUIDs. Okay. Unable to uh, delete. Asset for firmware. Firmware ID. And it's just a GUID again, so it's not. It will only mean anything to me. And at least I'll be able to see that it happened. And then I can go back and clean them up. Later. Okay. False. Uh, let's just go ahead and get all the information we can get. Else, uh, unable to delete asset from database and finally this is oh. come on What is happening? You give me a hard time. Okay. As uh, firmware not found for deletion. So that's the service taking care of all that. 
And then all I need to do, so everything here works, except for I need to create a delete for S3. So let's do that. Um, and to do that, we're just going to go look at the the S3 docs. How to do that. All right. S3 JavaScript. Um, this isn't what I want. Is it what I want? Maybe it's what I want. Sorry, I just got distracted. I want to see if anybody else has signed up for Deploy the Fleet. Any new users? Not today. Okay. So, locking the ABI, constructor method, delete bucket, no. Delete bucket, bucket, delete object. Removes the null version of an object and inserts a delete marker, which becomes the latest version of the object. If there isn't a null version, what? What are you even talking about? I just want to delete. What do I call to put it? Wrong project. This dot s three dot upload is upload one of these. Upload. Okay. Put object. Seriously, there's not just like a delete. Delete bucket. No. Weird. Maybe I need delete objects. If the object you want to delete is in a bucket where the bucket versioning configuration is MFA delete enabled, I need to look that up. I don't know. Yeah, I do not have multi-factor delete enabled. 
wonder what the security implications of that are. Hmm. Okay. Oh, here you go. To delete an object from a non-versioned bucket. These look literally exactly the same. What is different between these two? Bucket, key. Okay. I'm a non-version bucket. I pass bucket and key and I call s3.delete object passing the params function error data if error. They're exactly the same. Okay. Great. Thank you for that. Copy. And if I remember correctly, the key is, yeah, firmware, we'll copy that here in a second. This is gonna work. I don't think I want this to be async. I just want to wait it out. And the bucket will be this. And the key will be that. This dot S three dot also has a lot of things. Dot delete object. Params function if error. Console dot log. We're actually just going to say console dot error. S3 failure. Trying to delete firmware asset. Alrighty. Else, nothing. Um, I hate this form here. Let's fix this. Yes, an error occurred, thank you. Okay. And then we will return false. Else, let's get rid of all of this and just say return true. I got gotcha. you. Async. Yeah. 
Let's do it this way. Um, yep, I like this better. Let's say let uh, delete promise equal this dot promise. Okay, I think we could just do it this way. We do a try. And a catch error. And same thing. I'll see. Get rid of all of this. And we just say await. Oh, Turn true. Return false. Promise. <laughs> there we go. Turn true or false. Uh, why is the problem? Oh. Let's call it async then. What's the problem? Async save, what do you mean? Yeah, it is. Async save works. Async delete. Why does this hate this? Property delete is not assignable to the same property and base type. Oh, because Boolean and promise Boolean. Yeah, in memory. Is this all the in memory? This is okay. Uh, we need to go back up to the this and say that we don't have a return type. That's why for the save promise boolean. There we go. Okay. Now it should be happy. This is the in-memory one. We're still gonna just leave it as not implemented for now. S3. Then we'll just await it from the firmware service. There we go. Like that. Okay, the question now is, does this actually work? Uh, delete firmware, we just gotta make sure that we're calling that. We can get rid of this. And we'll just say, let delete succeeded. 
boolean equal uh, const away uh, firmware service dot delete firmware and we're going to pass in rec dot params dot id and we'll say if delete succeeded else return res dot status we'll just say 500 for now just like that okay all right i think that should work now oh, let's give it a shot and i will open up So what I need to do first of all is find the firmware. Okay, we're gonna go to Twitch32 firmware. And we've got this 1.0.7. Let's find that firmware. Uh, seven and looks like it worked. Okay, so I'm gonna grab the product ID for that. No, not the product ID. What am I doing? I'm gonna grab the firmware ID, which is that. I want ID string equals that. All right. So we've got that's one we're going to try and delete 1.0.7. And I also need to. Check S3. All right, created November 19th. Yep, that's what I show. So I have that object in my S3 bucket. Let's try to delete it. Delete. Uh oh. Uh oh. Yeah, there's the big old splat. What do you mean is not a function? Yes, it is. Okay, so I don't think that deleted anything. My S3 object is still there. And my database table is still there. Firmware delete is not a function. That is rubbish. It is. Oh, I've got to do that from JSON. I know what I got to do. This is another thing that I would like. To fix.
yeah. Um, uh, let's see. Because we don't have the object, and so we do. Here we go. It's this. Okay, because we need an object. This is another thing I have a backlog item for. <laughs> okay. Um, yes. So we will say delete firmware. We'll say firmware data equals that. And if firmware data, then we're going to come into here and say const firmware equals... equals firmware dot from data data okay what's the problem oh come on what are you talking about No, why, why, why do you hate me? What do I? Oh, okay. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. It's not actually firmware. It's more I firmware. So, you know, I think that's probably more accurate I firmware, which I'm going to have to include I firmware. I think that should really work. Version and product ID. Fine. It'll map it. This should fix it. Okay. What I do worry about, though, um, in our little experiment here, is we should probably show something like we should probably show something like a spinner because that could take a, not a minute but it could take a bit so firmware let's try it twitch 32 1.0.7 is what we're going to delete we've got it open over here they're still here. Asset is still there, and the database entry is still there. So I'm going to say 1.0.7, and I'm going to say delete. Let's see how fast it is. So it took just a second. So it says it's deleted. Let's come over here. Aha. S3 failure trying to delete firmware asset. So, I wonder why. But now, our database item is gone. Excellent. And our S3 is not gone. And so I'm going to pull this off screen and check to make sure that we're pointed. At the correct. Bucket. And 
we will not be. And that is uh, let me look here. Let's go to settings. Config. Yeah. I have found the problem, and I will fix it. Okay. I think that will fix it. I just needed to I was not pointed at the right S3. So I'm gonna manually delete it since it's gone and it's nice to clean it up. So I'm gonna delete this object. Permanently delete. Okay. And then we are gonna find another one. <laughs> You delete. Um, we're going to restart this, refresh this. Okay, there's 32, and we're going to pick on 1.0.6. Let me find 1.0.6. Okay, man, I just thought I almost deleted all of them. That would have been wild. 1.0.6. Testing with end instead of close. That is this guy right here. Okay, testing with end instead of close is 1.0.6. I have the ID. Oh, failed it. No, 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 get out of here. Uh, exit. Okay, November 19th. Yep, 1.0.6. Okay, now let's see what happened. Failure trying to delete. So what this is telling me now, for sure, is that I have a permission issue. And I could do that if I printed out the stack but I'm not going to at the moment. Clean objects, okay. Um, let's just look at it real quick and then we will end the stream. We've been going for an hour and a half. And we'll look at groups. Ah. That is the problem. Um, let's see. How can I show you? Here we go. 
This is from the IAM in S3. Here are the actions. So it allows for a put object and a get object. It does not allow for a delete object. And so this is failing because I don't have the uh, privileges on set correctly on the S3 bucket to allow my backend to delete items. And I remember doing that for a reason. And that was because I was thinking I didn't want it to be able to delete them. But for now, I'm going to enable that. Um, I still don't. What I think I would like to do ultimately is I would create this in such a way that when the delete happened, the backend service would not have the ability to delete. It would only have the ability to create things. It would not be able to delete, including items in the database. And so I would mark them as deleted, like I said earlier. And what I would do is I would queue up a task, call a Lambda or something that had a completely different set of privileges to it to be able to delete things. So it would have a different set of, it would be a completely isolated account, this idea of least privilege, where it would get a queue of item, you know, a queue of basically actions to say, oh, a firmware was deleted. Let me go clean up the database and let me clean up the S3 bucket. And if there's any problems, I'll let you know. Um, but then it's completely detached. Like the back end at that point is literally just, hey, let me queue that task up and somebody will take care of it. So um, I think that's a good way to scale and separate. Right now, I'm just going to, going to enable it so it will be able to delete from S3 so that I can clean those up now. And I can always reassess that later um, through my backend service code. So that's going to do it for the stream tonight. Uh, that was good. I think we're all the way there. I'll just change this permission. I'll do a little bit more testing. You don't need to watch that obviously. And uh, I think we should be good to go. We'll have delete functionality and deploy the fleet, which will be really exciting. So um, that's going to do it. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.